I'm going to be talking about an international economics concept known as the terms of trade. We're going to start with the definition of the terms of trade. We'll introduce the formula for how a country can calculate its terms of trade. We'll walk through several examples of this calculation and then we'll talk about some terminology relating to how a country's terms of trade can change over time. Talk about reasons that a country's terms of trade might change. So if you've been studying international economics, you know that countries trade with one another for goods and services based on the principle of comparative advantage. With this concept in mind, we know that a particular country will export the goods which it specializes its production in and import goods from other countries that it does not produce domestically. When discussing terms of trade, what we're really talking about is the value of a country's exports relative to the value of its imports. In this way, the terms of trade of a nation measures how much imports a country can buy for a unit of its exports. The terms of trade is expressed as an index value. It is basically an index of export prices over import prices. If you've been studying economics for a while, then you have probably come across indexes in the past. For example, in macroeconomics, you might have learned about the consumer price index. The CPI is how we measure inflation in a nation. It's simply the price of a particular basket of goods in one period of time divided by the price of the same basket of goods in a particular period of time. To measure terms of trade, we basically use the same method. We find the price of a basket of a country's exports in one period of time and divide it by the price of the same basket of exports in another period of time and multiply that by 100. Using this method, we come up with an index of export prices. So to find a nation's terms of trade, we must first know an index of export prices from that nation. Using a base year, we can determine whether a country's export prices have increased or decreased over time. Once we know the index of export prices, we can divide that price index by an index of import prices, which measures the prices of the goods that a country imports in a particular year and determines whether the prices of those imports have risen or fallen. Let's have a quick look at our table on the right here. We've got a country, we'll, we'll call this country Y. In the left side of this table, we have an index of export prices for country Y. So we can see here that between 2011 and 2012, the price of exports decreased. And again, between 2012 and 2013, the price of this country's exports decreased. However, between 2013 and 2014, it's obvious that the price of this country's exports increased. Later on in this lesson, we'll talk about different reasons that a country's export prices might increase or decrease over time. In the column on the right, we have import prices. The numbers here represent how the price of a basket of goods that this country is importing have changed over time. We can see that between 2011 and 2012, the price of imports, our abbreviation for imports is M, have increased. But between 2012 and 2013, import prices fell. So the price of imports fell. And then between 2013 and 2014, the prices of imports rose once again. Now, the terms of trade can be calculated by dividing the index of export prices for each year by the index of import prices for each year. Let's do that now for each of these years. Let's start by calculating the terms of trade for 2011. To do this, we simply take the index of the country's export prices, which is 102, divided by the index of the country's import prices, which is 98, and we must convert this to an index, so we multiply that by 100. I should indicate that over here as well. The terms of trade is actually expressed as an index itself. So we multiply whatever value we get when dividing the two index prices by 100. Let's do that calculation now. 102 divided by 98 gives us 1.04. Multiply this by 100. And we get a terms of trade of 104 for 2011. We can interpret this value by saying that country Y had a favorable terms of trade in 2011. On average, one unit of country Y's exports could purchase 1.04 units of country Y's imports. This is a favorable terms of trade. Let's look at 2012 and determine how country Y's terms of trade may have changed between these two years. 
2012 terms of trade can be found by dividing the export index price of 94 by the import index price of 100 and multiplying by 100. Let's do that now. For 2012, we have a terms of trade of 94. Let's go on to 2013 and we'll do 2013 and 2014 really quickly. So I've rounded my numbers to the nearest whole number here. And what we have is some values that represent the changes in country-wise terms of trade between 2011 and 2014. Let's do some simple analysis of these numbers here so we can determine what exactly is going on in country-wise trade with the rest of the world. Between 2011 and 2012, we see what we call a deterioration in country-wise terms of trade. What this means is that export prices have fallen, let's say the price of exports have fallen relative to the price of imports. Country-wise terms of trade have deteriorated. What has happened between 2012 and 2013? Here we see a slightly smaller deterioration, but a deterioration nonetheless. Again, relative to the price of imports, country-wise export prices have decreased. The difference between 2012 and 2013 is that actually import prices have fallen as well, but at the same time, export prices fell and overall, there was a deterioration in the terms of trade. Things are not looking too good between 2000 and 2013 regarding country-wise terms of trade. In both years, 2012 and 2013, they have deteriorated. Here, however, we see a drastic improvement in country-wise terms of trade. When the value of the terms of trade increases, we say terms of trade have improved. What this means is that the price of country-wise exports have increased relative to the price of imports. So we have some terms that we can interpret now. A country's terms of trade do not increase or decrease. Rather, the terms we use is improvement in terms of trade and deterioration in terms of trade. We'll define these terms over here. A country's terms of trade are said to have improved when export prices are increasing relative to import prices. This is when the terms of trade value increases. Let's talk briefly about the impact that an improvement in the country's terms of trade can have. Now, whether an improvement in terms of trade is good or bad for the economy depends on a couple factors. The question is, how will an improvement in the terms of trade affect the nation's macroeconomy? Specifically, how will net exports be affected by an improvement in the country's terms of trade? And this is where we have to consider some other factors. We must consider the value of the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports. So depending on the PED for imports and exports, an improvement in the terms of trade could move the current account towards surplus. And this would occur if demand is inelastic for exports and imports or towards deficit if demand is elastic for imports and exports. Now let's step back a minute. What does the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports have to do with how an improvement in the terms of trade affects the nation's current account balance? You have learned in previous units that the current account balance basically refers to net exports here. So what we're saying here is that the country's net exports will increase. In other words, the current account will move towards surplus only if the higher price of the country's exports do not strongly deter foreign consumers from buying those goods. So if foreign demand for a country's goods is inelastic, then the higher prices relative to their imports will not deter foreign consumption and the amount that foreigners spend on the country's exports will actually increase, moving their current account towards surplus. At the same time, as import prices fall relative to export prices, if demand for those imports is relatively inelastic, then the country's consumers will not respond by drastically increasing their quantity demanded of imports. If imports increase only proportionally less than the price of imports fell, then domestic consumers will spend less on imports, and at the same time, foreign consumers will be spending more on this country's exports, leading to an improvement in its current account balance, moving it towards surplus. If, on the other hand, 
demand for imports and exports is elastic, then an improvement in the country's terms of trade could actually move its current account towards deficit as net exports decrease due to the highly responsive nature of foreign consumers, leading them to consume a dramatically smaller quantity of the country's exports as its export prices rise. So something we need to point out here is that an improvement in the terms of trade does not necessarily help the nation's net exports and its aggregate demand like you may believe based on the term improvement. Whether it improves the current account balance depends on whether demand for the country's exports and imports is inelastic or elastic. Here we go.